Hi, I'm Fat Baby Dave and today we're going to be learning about how to draw hair. So hair is really important in a portrait to define character and identity and likeness and as the saying goes it really does frame your face. But it's also one of the most difficult things to draw because it is both really detailed with thousands of strands all over your head but also not much to hang your drawing off of in terms of structure. Like my hair right now just looks like this big like dark blob on top of my head. So what we're going to do is look at five step technique to try and improve this and also change the way that we look at how we can process hair in terms of its translation to a drawing. So the first step is to really look at the subject that we're drawing. First off, even if you're using a reference photo, look at your own hair and really get to grips with the various tones, the shapes and the structures, how hair is formed together. So when you're drawing the hair on the paper, you're drawing what you really see rather than what you think that hair looks like. One trick that you can do is to take a photo on Photoshop and eyedropper each of the colours. This will show you the range of values and tones and colours that you have within what might otherwise have seemed like quite a simple subject. Now to make it easier to show, I'm going to be drawing from a reference photo, but if you can, try and draw from life as much as possible. I'm going to use this photo of Adore Delano and this photo is quite good for starting off drawing hair as it's got lots of different shapes in it. will actually make it easier to draw. The next step is to get the shape of the hair. So we want to avoid just seeing it all as one big block. So what we're going to do is start off by getting the various shapes as they connect together. You want to draw really lightly at this point a light drawing of various shapes coming together to create this overall structure which we will use as the sort of skeleton for the rest of the drawing. Step number three we're looking at tone and that is the range of light to dark within the drawing and this is what will give the hair depth. So what we really want to be focusing on are the darkest and the lightest points. So what we'll do initially is to lightly map out where the darkest areas of the hair are, giving more detail to the structure that we've already put down. And then we can start defining the edges of the shapes and the different tones more heavily. Now you want to be careful to keep the light areas light. What we don't want to do is create a cartoon thick black line around the entire hair. So we really look at where the hair is light and where it's dark. Step number four, we're now looking at texture. And this will be the techniques that we use to draw the main body of the hair. So there are many different ways to make marks on paper and we're going to show a few of them here. The first is cross hatching which is interspersed lines which can be used to map out shaded areas and also be a style of shading in its own right. Secondly we have block shading which is completely covering the shaded area in pencil and this is especially good for very dark areas. Thirdly we have use of negative space where the main focus is actually what is not drawn. And finally and probably the most useful for a lot of types of hair is gradiating lines where the pencil is following the direction of the strands of hair and it starts dark to allow the pencil to become lighter. So now we can use these techniques on the drawing, going in the direction of the hair strands, we're starting dark and then going lighter, less pressure on the pencil as we go towards where the light is hitting the hair. So this means where the hair is tucking into itself, such as where it's being drawn at the moment, that's where it will be dark as it is shying away from the light. And you can also use cross hatching or thick shading for when you get to very dark areas such as this. And really don't be afraid to go as dark as you need to go. We really want to get a heavy contrast between the various tones on the hair. And it's up to you how exactly you want to stick to whatever it is that you're drawing. Hair is one of those things we have a bit more freedom with because it can take on so many different shapes. So for example here, I've decided to exaggerate the bottom curl because I think that, that shape is particularly nice in terms of adding fullness to the hair. So this is really up to you with what you want to do. Hair is never, 
never perfect. There's always little strands coming out of it, even in a photoshopped picture like this one. And the final step is to experiment with all of these different techniques. Once you've gotten the base structure in the drawing, you can then also be a bit more experimental with the types of marks that you're using. I'm sort of creating a sense of energy by just doing dark and very sporadic lines vaguely in the shape of the hair. There really isn't a right or wrong way to do it, it's just about experimenting with what you want to do yourself. Looking at some other drawings that I've done, different experimentations for hair. In this one of Audrey Hepburn, the lines are very tight together and it's very much controlled. In this one, there's actually very little hair drawn whatsoever, even though in the reference the hair was dark brown. The edges of the fringe and just lightly round the outside are enough to suggest the hair that would usually be there. This hairstyle is much more free-flowing than the Audrey one, but just as detailed. In this drawing we can see the big strands coming across her face and it's just through a couple of light lines and the fact that we're covering up the skin tones and parts of the eye underneath that it suggests that you have this hair coming across her face. And this then contrasts with other parts of the drawing where it's much darker and much more detailed. And finally to show that there really aren't any limits to how you represent hair in a, in a drawing or a painting. This is a piece by Julie Verhoeven, which is one of my favorite pieces for how it's shown hair because it's so simple, um, has a very different feel to a much more detailed style of painting or drawing of hair than you might otherwise see. So everything at the beginning are the guidelines and the basic building blocks for how you go about approaching hair. Once you understand these various rules, you can break as many of them as you want people can be incredibly creative with the ways that they go about representing hair on paper. So that's everything, that's just how I go about drawing hair. Let me know if you have any questions or any comments or if there's anything else that you would add to that. So thanks very much for watching and see you later.